in here. My name is Farid Yavari. I'm the VP of Technology at Falcon Store. I joined Falcon Store about eight weeks ago, so kind of new on the block. But before Falcon <coughs> Store, I was actually at eBay, and uh, I was uh, actually in charge of uh, storage architecture at eBay. And uh, you know, I was there for about four years. Before eBay, I was at HP, again, uh, data center architecture and uh, storage architecture at HP. <clears throat> and uh, thank you again for having us. My name is Tim Sheets. I'm Vice President of Corporate Marketing at Falcon Store. I've been with the company for about four years. Um, when I started, I was actually running product management. And then two years ago, our CEO asked me to pick up the marketing duties. And uh, it's been a lot of fun helping, you know, kind of reinvigorate and, and redefine who Falcon Store really is. I think a lot of you guys know us as a data protection company. But you know, we've really been much more than that. And today, we're going to share with you what we're doing, where we're going, and um, how virtualization is not just about virtualizing the servers or the storage or the infrastructure. Right? There's a lot of things that we need to think about and a lot of different approaches that I think we as an industry have to start taking differently than we've traditionally done. So with that, Fareed, how about you uh, lead us yes. off? So. Uh <clears throat> So there was a lot of things that I learned uh, at my previous job. Uh, I was on the consumption side of technology at scale, at enterprise. And one of the reasons I joined Falcon Store was that I saw the opportunity to get on the other side of the table and actually build products that will address the real needs of the industry at scale. So a little bit of background about the company. Uh, you know, most of our competitors in the newer areas that we are trying to uh, to get into and the new markets are startup companies. But we are a 15-year-old company. We were founded uh, back in year 2000. Uh, we have uh, quite a few patents, about 24 patents already with 16 pending, and we are global. We are in EMEA, we are in APAC, uh, we have offices all over the world. So that sets us apart from a lot of the startup companies that we're competing with when it comes to uh, being able to support our product be, you know, and, and have the presence out there to actually uh, you know, be out there and, and, and really support our customers as well. We are the creators of the Falcon Store tape library, uh, micro scan replication, which I'll be talking about later on, uh, disk safe, so on and so forth. So we have a lot of mature enterprise grade uh, technology that we have already built into our product. And uh, we are kind of leveraging that to actually create new products and, and, and wrap it with uh, you know, a lot of new capabilities and functionalities that we can address newer markets, as I will actually uh, uh, you know, explain. So <clears throat> we are actually addressing change. Uh, there is a lot of change in the storage industry that uh, has happened over the uh, recent years. Uh, for a long time, storage was just like a box in the data center was managed by the sysadmins. It was just a, a provider of storage and you know, you, you know, you would go on it once in a while, uh, you know, carve out some lawns and then present it to the host, so on and so forth. We all know uh, how that goes. But now, you know, storage is very different. Uh, storage uh, has a lot of capabilities built into it. Storage also has a very blurred line between uh, storage and server. We have uh, storage servers, we have you know, all, all kinds of new products that are coming out. We have scale out storage. So there is a big change in the industry when it comes to storage. And uh, the way we formatted this presentation is before we get into the capabilities and the functionalities of FreeStore, which is our uh, software defined storage product, I just wanted to take a little bit of time and share some of my experiences with you as far as how we see the data center of the future and how we see things evolving in the near and long term future. And that way you will see later on when we talk about our capabilities and the features that we're building into our product, you're able to actually see why we're doing these things and how it fits into our vision of where the industry is going. So the trends that we see in the industry right now, and, and especially in the data centers, you know, we all know explosive growth in storage. I mean, with Internet of Things, Internet of Things coming on, big data analytics, object stores, I mean, there is this mountain and mountain of uh, storage that each company at scale 
is, is actually uh, having to deal with. I actually did a variation of this presentation back in May at, university, at, at Stanford University Electrical Engineering Department. And uh, there was a lot of good discussion around how we see these trends and there was a lot of validation as well. Uh, <clears throat> so please keep in mind a lot of these things that we're talking about, I'm talking about them from the perspective of enterprise. Uh, you know, there is discussions and, and uh, 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 you know, some opinions to be made around SMB and small, and small medium business implementations, but a lot of these trends that you see up here is the trends that we actually see and we, we actually anticipate for enterprise. So explosive growth, big data, big data analytics object, what that drives is basically at some point after a certain scale, after a certain point of growth, you have to think about this aggregation of storage and compute. Right now, a lot of uh, implementations, especially in uh, NoSQL and uh, big data analytics Hadoop, they are a DAS model implementation where you have storage and compute in the same chassis on the same box. But after a certain scale, like I mentioned, uh, you have to actually start disaggregating. And the reason behind that is data tiering and also independent scale and refresh. You want to be able to independently scale your compute when you need compute, and you want to scale independently on the storage side when you need storage. Now, what happens when you disaggregate storage and compute? Uh, the traffic that is in, in, in the DAS model, the traffic usually goes through your PCI bus, and it goes from compute to storage. In a disaggregated model, the network becomes your, your bus. So you have to actually increase your network bandwidth. You have to have losslessness in your network, especially when it comes to storage traffic. And you have to have capabilities built into the network, such as uh, a network-enabled top-of-rack switches with big buffers. Uh, basically, you want to avoid any type of loss of packet or packet drops. So that actually translates into beefing up your network. As a matter of fact, when we did the TCO a while back, about 25% of the cost of your implementation goes to your network once you actually go to a disaggregated model. And uh, you, know, you, need, you need technologies like priority flow control, QCN, ECNs, so on and so forth in order to manage that environment. And the scale-out solution actually is driven by TCO. So you know, the total cost of ownership is everything when you go to scale. Every penny that you save will translate into thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars when you actually deploy at scale. And uh, obviously, you know, TCO is all about cost, performance, and density. So uh, for those guys who actually interacted with me in my previous job, uh, the first thing we always stressed was how dense is your storage solution? How much can I pack into one rack? How much uh, is my failure domains? How much is my how, how big is my availability zones? So on and so forth. So, so density, cost, and in some cases performance. We will see later on that uh, performance is not necessary for all implementations, but in some definitely. And Hyperconverged is, uh, is an architecture that will work to a certain limit. And after that, when you really get big, the, uh, you know, the, the data tiering requirements and the requirements around independent scaling uh, will actually force your hand to go to a disaggregation model. So here I have uh, silos, if you will, of, uh, of storage types and at, at hyperscale again. So storage infrastructure usually for hyperscale companies will fall into one of these areas. So OLTP, starting on the left, you know, mission critical and going to high capacity to the right. OLTP, you know, uh, online transaction processing is usually the bread and butter of every company. That's where all the transactions go through. Uh, that's where all the money comes through. And that's an area that is very hard to bring in new technologies. Because the first and foremost uh, thing in, in, in that area is basically uh, availability and security. 
So any new technology that these companies are actually trying to implement is usually makes its way into the infrastructure uh, through the other silos. And then once it's proven, it will gradually move into OLTP. Usually a centralized topology, as far as the scale, uh, although big, it's not the biggest environment in the, in, in the infrastructure. And because of that, most companies are willing to spend the extra money in this environment and buy the higher end solutions with all the capabilities to be able to provide the, the uh, be able to provide uh, the level of availability and security that's required for this type of solution. Mostly it's running on, on fiber channel, some cases on NFS, but obviously, you know, there is a move to actually move everything to iSCSI and the reason is the push that these data center folks are getting from the networking folks to have a, uh, you know, very simple network design. You know, they don't want to actually support fiber channel, FCOE, iSCSI, this and that all in their network. You know, the simpler it gets, the better it is for them. So that's why there is a push for iSCSI. But as of right now, I personally believe that iSCSI is not ready for uh, OLTP yet, but, but it will get there. And as far as management is uh, SAN and NAS, you know, obviously. Then, you know, we get into these different silos that are kind of newer. You know, when you talk about NoSQL, big data, and cloud, you know, these are the things that have not been as traditional as OLTP. And, you know, they kind of go towards a more high capacity end of things and less mission critical. So NoSQL, uh, right now, like I mentioned, is mostly DAS, a direct attached storage. But there is a push to go disaggregated because of the, uh, of the TCO models that will work to, to its benefit. The size of it is in terabytes. It's getting into petabytes. The growth is medium, but the projection is that those areas will actually start growing. A lot of the static information that was traditionally kept in OLTP uh, is migrating more and more towards document stores and such. Uh, so, you know, MongoDB, Cassandra, Couchbase, and, and uh, those type of infrastructure. Uh, because of that, you know, people are looking into a disaggregated model with iSCSI. And, you know, the management, it's either local management or, uh, you know, based on Cinder if they're into OpenStack. And big data. So that's the biggest area in, at scale uh, companies. You know, you're talking about hundreds of petabytes of data in those areas in some cases. And still, because of the traditional implementation model of Hadoop and analytics in those areas, a lot of these companies are still running in DAS model. And in that area specifically, they're looking into doing a lot of tiering. And because of the tiering, they have to get into a disaggregated model. So tiering there is, is crucial because you want to have the right data residing on the right media at the right tier because TCO is so critical. And the data in those areas, you know, in, in big data, actually is hot when it's first ingested and then over time it becomes cold. So you want to be able to actually have a tiering capability that uh, is intelligent enough and is heat based so, you know, so basically based on a heat map, you start moving back and forth your data automatically, automatically behind the scene. And uh, th uh, that's one of the capabilities that we are actually looking for uh, uh, building inside, uh, inside FreeStore. And, and then cloud. We're all familiar with cloud implementations, pri uh, private cloud, public clouds, and, and how they work. You know, the, the, the footprint is not as big as the uh, uh, big data, but the growth rate obviously is big because most of these companies are actually going through a transformation to as a service for everything. And uh, it just helps with, with, uh, with all the benefits that you get from a cloud implementation. So if you look at it, you know, there is actually two, uh, two distinct areas. One is your SAN storage appliance and the other one actually falls into scale out uh, server appliance. Falcon Store is very strong over here with SAN storage appliance because we've been in the business for 15 years and, and the OLTP has been the traditional way of, of implementing uh, storage. We have capabilities uh, 
uh, data services in this area that are very strong, enterprise grade. And we are trying to get into the other and expand into the scale out. And for scale out, we have a free store product that we'll talk about later on. And we're working on capabilities and functionalities to build, to actually get more and more into those other areas of storage. And we'll see later on in detail. So uh, just to give you an idea about what I'm talking about when I'm talking about server storage. Server storage is a type of storage that we actually, um, you know, so usually in, in the scale out, uh, column that we talked that, that, that we just saw on the right hand side in the previous slide uh, we actually deploy server storage and the server storage here you know in the converged infrastructure you have your storage and your your compute the uh, uh, circle up there is actually the compute with an app running in it and and you just scale scale that way so you keep adding these machines but in a scale out or a disaggregated infrastructure, you can actually start to move your data to a lower cost platform on the right. And those platforms on the right, they have the cheaper disks in them, and, and they have some kind of compute in them as well. So you can push off some compute also to the uh, uh, storage servers, and still you have an option of keeping your hot data on your uh, on your uh, 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 the uh, uh, the appliance on, on the left, which is your local data. That way, you don't have to go through the network and and deal with uh, with the network latency and the cost of the network. Mostly, the hot data, and especially in NoSQL environments, the hot data is on SSDs and uh, on flash, basically. And then, as you move towards cold and warm, you can actually put them on lower cost hard disk drives or maybe SMR drives. So this is, you know, this is the difference, the difference architecture that I, I was actually referring to. And as far as the temperature of the data, uh, you know, these are some of the, uh, you know, the industry, I wouldn't say standards, but uh, guidelines as far as, you know, what defines a hot layer, what defines a warm layer, and what defines a, uh, a cold layer. And as, as you see, you know, the warm and cold, it's trying to get into a disaggregated model, and those are, uh, you know, the uh, uh, numbers that uh, most companies are targeting for those environments, as far as throughput and IOPS and and the capabilities they need. You know, whether it's block, object, and how long they're actually going to keep these uh, data in, intact. You don't seem to mention file on there at all. So, uh, so this is actually the. Uh, Oh, as far as uh, block and object, so so that's that's actually an interesting uh, question uh, or an interesting comment. There, we see file as a legacy environment. So uh, the whole idea behind object was to eventually uh, replace file because it has all the capabilities of file plus some more scale out capabilities. But the truth of the matter is, you're absolutely right. A lot of companies are kind of reluctant to move their file infrastructure to object because it requires a change at the app level. And they end up putting a file layer back on top again. And, and they end up putting file on top because there, it's costly to move to object. Be and also gives them things like better um, security, um, credentials management, and so on, compared on to a so typical forth. object yes. store would do anyway. So. Yes, so, so this is more of a, a forward-looking type of uh, okay. slide, and that's why I did. But if, if we wanted to put a file in that, you know, it would definitely go in the warm, uh, not necessarily hot, but warm, and maybe even cold area. And uh, as far as the type of applications that we run, in these environments, you know, NoSQL is definitely, you know, it requires a hot layer, and then you know the cloud applications, Hadoop, you know, they fall on on warm, and Hadoop Archive definitely is part of the cold. Yeah, just to give you an idea of how things fall in place when you grow at scale. So the problems that are currently facing storage, they are not going away. So the first one is. Uh, uh, modernization while preventing investments. And uh, Falcon Store is very good at addressing this issue. Uh, we actually have a software layer that runs agnostic to the hardware storage. And you can keep your older hardware still intact and add on newer hardware, you know, whether it's flash appliances, whether it's a different vendor, uh, whether it's commodity hardware underneath. You can actually preserve your older environment and gradually wean off of it 
and you don't have to, to stand up a completely new environment and do a, a switch. It can be done over, over time. Location is definitely a, a big thing that we, uh, is a big uh, problem, and we're addressing that head on. We have, uh, we have technologies that actually do uh, on site clustering. We have technologies that we do site to site, site to cloud, or cloud to cloud uh, type of uh, uh, data services and, and, and protection, and, and, and all the functionalities that we provide. So we play in all those different areas. Fareed, if sure. may I jump in? So Tim Sheets, uh, VP of Corporate Marketing here. Uh, you know, one of the things that we think about, right, in, in storage, creating a copy of the data is not new, right? We started that, we called them clusters, and we got smart and said, okay, let's stretch those clusters and put them at different sites. And now we're seeing the advent of where, with managed service providers, co-location, cloud providers come in, and how do you get the data from the customer site to that hosted facility? But I think the thing that's really coming that we have to start thinking about, and this is not just Falcon Store, this is us as an industry. How do we enable those customers in the future to say, hey, I went with a service provider or a cloud service provider, MSP, use the term you like. If they're not getting the, the quality of services, the SLRs and SLAs aren't being met, how do they move to a new provider? Because if you think about it, the infrastructure is different. That means the data is not always going to be compatible. Right, you're gonna have context issues. So how do we give them the ability to not only move the data, but do it in a way where it maintains context and it's abstracted and independent of whatever infrastructure is there? We've gotta give these guys the freedom and the flexibility to move and choose how they need to relative to their business requirements, not what's dictated by vendors' capabilities or lack thereof. So it's something that this problem has been here for a long time. But I think, you know, as we talk about virtualization, virtualization by itself doesn't solve the problem, but it could be a means to an end. But we got to take it a couple of steps further. And we're going to talk about how we can go do that. Back to you, Fareed. Yes, thank you. And uh, a third dilemma, definitely, you know, the uh, uh, silo solutions and, uh, and the mixed environment pre present ongoing challenges. So, you know, once you're tied to a specific hardware platform, once you're tied into a specific architecture, very hard to actually move around and be nimble and, and, and have, uh, you know, flexible functionality on top of it. So that's where a, uh, an abstraction layer, a, hard, a software abstraction layer comes very handy, and that's what FreeStore is all about. And then the next thing is definitely the pricing models. You know, a lot of vendors actually lock you in into their hardware, although they say that they are, you know, they can run on any other hardware besides theirs. But when you look at their licensing models in specific, you, you know, you see that if you don't run on their hardware, the licensing cost will just go through the roof. But that's not the case where you have an, a, a, an agnostic um, a software layer that runs on any type of hardware. So we have a new we have a new approach to uh, storage, uh, data management for a new world. Uh, we have uh, you know you can you know with, with with our capabilities you can actually turn your data services on and off as needed. You only pay for you know the amount of uh, data that you're managing. You never over provision. Uh, you don't pay for licenses that you're not that you're not using. Uh, pricing and performance are totally predictable. You can really predict your prices. You can really predict how you perform and, and the capabilities you get out of your infrastructure. Everything is predictable. There are no surprises there. Add new technologies on the fly. You know, once you're hardware independent, you know, you, you can add a, a new hardware or new technology and this software just stretches on top of it and makes it seamless to the application. Uh, no licenses, fees, and OPEX focus, not, not CAPEX focus.